some of my thoughts and experiences with you on the subject, incredible power of silence. Well, I'm afraid you might not follow my pronunciation there, well, I'll go slow. Incredible power of silence. At present, we are living in a loud world, which is becoming increasingly noisy with the sounds of traffic, cell phones, TV, electronic home appearances, chattering, making life uneasy. Today, noise pollution has become a serious problem for human health, both physical and <coughs> mental. Noise beyond a limit produces many diseases such as hypertension, stress, forgetfulness, depression, and insomnia. In addition to the outward noise, there is mental noise, the constant chatter of the mind. It is a kind of inner monologue that goes on constantly in the mind. Too often, these are negative thoughts about others that intensify worries, anger, frustration, hatred, and jealousy. This is a manifestation of the habit of human beings to spend maximum time with others, friends, relatives, colleagues, or pets, or things like TV, computer, or mobile, with the purpose of achieving some kind of happiness. We always try to avoid being with ourselves. That is because most of us are ignorant of the fact that there is true happiness and peace only in silence, which is within us. Beneath the noise, outer and inner, there is a vast ocean of silence where one can feel relaxed, calm, and peaceful. Noise is only the periphery. Silence is the center. Silence is the core. Silence is all pervading. All sounds and noise arise from silence. Some years ago, I had an inexplicable experience of silence. One fine morning, our next door neighbor on the right side decided to demolish the old house and go for a multi-story apartment and started the work without delay. During the same time, our left side neighbor felt like renovating his house by adding two more rooms. The family living opposite our house started celebrating religious function for 10 days with chantings, with chantings played uh, through a loudspeaker without any break. So, with the noise from all around, I felt very, I felt really terrible, very, very uncomfortable. Adding to it, my negative emotions, you know, like irritation, anger, restlessness started bothering me a lot. So, leaving my work unfinished, I went inside my room and locked myself. I sat down with the intention of getting rid of this noise outside and quietening my mind. I was in fact fighting with the noise outside and the thoughts within. But it was of no use. The noise still haunted me from all sides. With 
determination and patience, I continued to sit there with my eyes closed and tried to go beyond the noise. After some time, I felt the outside noise is fading away and inner emotions coming down. Coming down, I could feel a gentle flow of energy throughout my body from top to the bottom. And a moment came when there was absolutely no noise, neither from the outside nor from inside. There was no irritation, no impatience, no restlessness. I experienced silence with its vastness, which was extremely rejuvenating and peaceful. It was really an experience, difficult to express in language. Now, silence can be categorized into five types. Silence of speech, silence of the eyes, silence of the ears, silence of the mind, and silence of the self. The last one, silence of the self, is pure silence and is of much importance. Let us understand the different modes of silence. Silence of speech. Mahatma Gandhi had said that by abstaining from speaking, one can become a better listener. And I too believe in it. When we are forced to be silent, we are forced to listen. Most of us don't know how to listen as there is always something going on on the back of our mind. Some judgment, some thoughts relating to our own self and others. We never fully listen and take in what another person is trying to say. But when we remain in silence, we can really listen to others who are trying to tell us something. In silence, we can hear the cry of a newborn baby lying outside the outside at the door of the door of a home. We can hear the helpless cry of a molested teenager. We can hear the groans of the hungry man without food for days. I can narrate you my experience in this regard. Among many cancer patients whom our TOS group help, Kavita is one suffering from leukemia. Of late, she developed some problem in her throat. She was, she has a none except uh, her widowed mother, Namita, who worked in a ladies' hostel as an assistant in the kitchen. One day, I was in silence in my prayer room. I heard the voice of Namita as if she was frantically wanting to talk to me. I got up immediately and telephoned her. She became very emotional and said that she had been trying to contact me to say that her daughter had to undergo an emergency operation on her throat for which she had to leave for Hyderabad, that is another city in India, next day. And she was in need of money. This is not one. Many times such things happen. Unless we are in silence, we cannot be a better listener. Unless we are a better listener, how can we reach out to people who need our help? 
Saint Haridas of India explains that we talk only by exhalation. The more we talk, the more we have to excel and the more life energy we lose. They say that a day's silence means a week longer of life and a day's speech means a week less of life. When we walk, sorry, when we talk, we use tremendous energy which can be preserved for meditation. Swami Nirmalananda, who remained in silence for 11 years, said, Wisdom to me is not a set of words, but freshness and emptiness of mind. Mahatma Gandhi used to observe silence every Monday, communicating on that day only through writing. I would like to narrate a small story which can be related to our day-to-day -day events. There was a farmer who used to work in his field from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Once, while returning from the field, he found that his wrist was, was missing. Immediately he went back to the field and searched for it. It wasn't there. I mean, it was not all that easy to find the watch in, that, uh, in such a vast field. Disappointed, he came back to his car. Fortunately, he saw some children playing cricket in the nearby ground, like these people are, you know. Play. He went up to them and asked if they could help him find the lost watch. All the boys said yes in a chorus and went into the field shouting with excitement and enthusiasm. They searched for half an hour but couldn't find, couldn't find it. Having failed, they came back. One eight-year-old boy was standing and watching everything. He came to the farmer and said, Sir, may I have a permission to search for the watch? The farmer said quite reluctantly, Okay. The boy very coolly went to the middle of the field and remained there quietly for some time. Then suddenly he went in a particular direction. With joy in his face, he came running towards the farmer and handed over the watch to him. The farmer was surprised and thanked him profusely for this hard job. But the boy said, Sir, I didn't do anything. I just stood there in the middle of the field in silence for 10 minutes. Then I heard the tick tick sound of the watch. I followed that sound and saw the watch lying there. I just picked it up and handed it over to you. So I didn't do much. Well, I'm sure you can imagine the power of silence. In silence, you can find what you are looking for. If 10 minutes of silence could find out the lost wristwatch. Everyday practice of silence can definitely get back our forgotten identity, the knowledge of ourself. Next is the silence of the eyes. Our physical eyes are the main doors to the outer world. There are sometimes disturbing sights in the outer world which are avoidable by silence of the, by silencing the physical eyes. Silence of the eyes is necessary for going within. When we sit in silence, automatically eyes get closed. One can visualize nature 
with her eyes closed. We can see with her mental eyes the nature's beauty, like the beautiful rising sun over the horizon, the gorgeous moon of the full moon day, the lovely sight of the waterfall, etc., and get absorbed in it. Those visions are soothing and in harmony with our inner self. One can, one can also sit with both physical and mental eyes closed to be in a deeper silence. I have tried this visualization, visualization with six small children below six years old in California. They were asked to sit in a squatting position uh, with eyes closed but mental eyes open. They were given the uh, task, they were given the color green to visualize. I was amazed to see that they could sit in that posture, in that position for 20 minutes without, you know, much movement in their bodies. It's really wonderful to see. After the visualization was over, each one started narrating what all, what all green things they saw in their mental eyes. All of them were bubbling with energy and enthusiasm. This helps increase their creativity and memory power. Silence of the ears. Silence of the ears can be observed by keeping away from the outer noise. Sound is reverberations of energy, whereas noise is unwanted, undesirable energy. One should try to avoid noise as much as one can. Nature makes sound, not noise. Early morning, one can hear the birds chirp. One can hear the wind blowing when one takes a stroll. Standing on the beach, one can hear the tides crashing on the shore. The sounds of nature are very soothing as they are in tune with our inner peace and therefore help us to transcend deeper into the silence. Our outer silence is simply a means to help us find the inner silence. Silence of the mind, which is really important. As food is required for the physical body, silence is needed for the nourishment of the mind. Mind is the source of all noise, all turbulence. Madame Blavatsky describes the mind as the slayer of the real. Mind distorts facts by its projection which have their roots in unconscious motives or desires. Therefore she says, slay the slayer. All the voices of the mind must be silenced so that the seeker can hear the inner voice. And when one comes to experience that, one can get united with all. Though appears to be passive, silence is dynamic because it is powerful. Everything good comes out of that. J. Krishnamurti speaks of dynamic silence of the mind which is at the level of psycho-spiritual experience. To him, an active mind is silent, aware and choiceless. Krishnamurti says, and I quote, there is the silence of the mind and 
silence of the mind, what is never touched by any noise, by any thought, or by the passing wind of experience. It is the silence that is innocent and endless. When there is this silence of the mind, actions spring from it, and the actions doesn't cause confusion or misery. Unquote. Silence can be said to be an unified existence where all questions are answered, all doubts are dissolved, all creative solutions are found. It is my personal experience is that silence, in silence one can let go of one's painful experiences of the past and release the repressed emotions. It gives strength to deal with difficult challenges in life and shows the way to get out of it as well. It is the place where you can forgive those who hurt you the most. It helps to control our emotions like anger, greediness, worries, stress, etc. Here I would like to mention that our TOS Odisha is uh, planning to start a hall of silence in the local prison for the convicts where they can learn how to remain in silence and handle their negative emotions through silence. They need to understand you know, their mistakes and try to reform themselves. This is possible through practice of silence and meditation. And we are going to start it sometime in March this year. Scientific researches show that at least two hours of silence every day increases the production of brain cells which brings down the risk of dementia and insomnia. They say that silence strengthens hippocampus, a part of the brain responsible for short and long term memory. Silence of the cell. This is the spiritual aspect of silence. Most of the major religions of the world consider silence as a place to experience the ultimate reality, the truth or God. The word mona, it is a Sanskrit word, the word mona in Sanskrit means silence and is derived from the word muni that refers to one who is uh, intensely silent, radiating an ineffable spirit of calmness. Buddha was regarded as a muni of highest order, as his meditation was based on the power of silence that led him to enlightenment. Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, of all things secret, I am the silence. The knowledge of the self is described in scriptures as the secret of all secrets, which is experienced only upon the deep inner silence. In Christianity, it is said, be still and know that I am God. The Sufi said, Rumi says, silence is the language of God. All else is poor translations. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> silence in Islam is simply salvation. Mother Teresa says, we need to find God and he cannot be found in noise and restlessness. God is the friend of silence. See how nature 
trees, flowers, grass, grows in silence. See the stars, the moon, the sun, how they move in silence. We need silence to be able to touch souls. For more sincere spiritual speaker, seekers, practice of meditation is necessary to go deeper into silence and for a longer period also. Deeper one goes into silence, closer one becomes with all. There is no other in silence. Silence is oneness, all pervasive. Beneath the loud and noisy world, there is stillness and peace which can be experienced. All the techniques of meditation are meant to bring us to the deepest state of inner silence. In the words of HPB, he who would hear the voice of Nada, the soundless sound, and comprehend it, has to learn the nature of dharana. The, the real meaning of silence, which is total absence of sound, doesn't exist in the universe. Sound and silence are not two opposite concepts. It is said that both sound and silence represent two forms of sound. Audible sound, which is sound of the known, and silence that represents non-audible sound, which is sound of the unknown. When we do meditation, trying to immerse in silence, we don't really shut our ability to hear sounds, rather we try to listen to an unique sound, the vibrating sound of the universe, which is the sound of our inner soul. It is that which HPB refers to as Nada, the soundless sound. This is a voice inside all of us and out in the whole cosmos that is hidden and subtle. Our purpose on earth is to reconnect ourselves with the voice which is the voice of our inner self, says HPB. That is the voice of the silence. No ears are required for the voice of the silence. It is experienced directly. In Nasadiya Sukta of Rig Veda, it is mentioned that before creation of the universe, there was no time, no space, no form, no being, no non-being. There was total silence, pure consciousness or absolute consciousness, which is called Nirguna Brahman in the Vedantic language, manifested as universal consciousness or Saguna Brahman, along with the resonating vibrational Nada, the sound of Om. It is the primordial sound of the macrocosm and the microcosm. In this context, I would like to mention about the experience of Ivan Alexander, an American neurologist who most of you might be knowing. Uh, Ivan narrated, uh, narrated his experience in an interview about his uh, near-death experience and uh, said when he was clinically declared as dead and was out of body, he heard an unusual sound of OM. He had no idea of either of the word or, or, or of the sound before. Silence is awareness. Mundaka Upanishad 
mention that silence is the Atman, the Self. In fact, silence is the genuine teaching about the ultimate reality because the Absolute is beyond the scope of speech and thought. Ramana Maharshi used to teach his followers through silence. To him, silence in the absolute sense is the culmination of jnana, self-realization. In one of the Upanishads, the disciple says to the teacher, Master, tell me the nature of the self. The teacher remained silent. Again the question was asked and again the answer was silence. By his silence, the teacher indicated that as the nature of self or Atman is indescribable in words, self is silence. We cannot describe it in words. It's beyond word. Silence cannot be experienced by sense organs or mind. It is directly experienced through consciousness. Silence of the speech, eyes, ears and mind are essential for the self-transformation. They are the means to the silence of the self, which is the end. They were the means, and the last one, silence of the self, is the end. Silence is both a journey and also the destination. Today, life has become more chaotic and loud because we have lost the art of being silent, which is so essential and powerful for our peaceful existence. Now people are prepared to pay you know, heavily to go to retreat centers to have the experience of silence, but actually one doesn't need it. Silence is within, very much within us. What we really need is our strong willpower, willingness and determination to avoid unnecessary outer and inner noise and by leading a simple, holistic life that requires healthy food for the body, silence for the mind and deeper silence that is meditation for the soul. So let us enrich and transform our life by adding silence to it. Before I end, I would like to you know, uh, request you all, can we sit for a while in silence, at least for three minutes, and then go back relaxed, is it? Thank you for giving me a pleasant hearing. Thank you all.